Parliament the thrashing mackerel thudded silver then leaden. The vermilion scales of snappers faded like sunset. The wet mossed coral sea fans that winnowed weeds in the wiry water stiffened to bony lace and the dripping tendrils of an octopus wrung its hands at the slaughter from the gutting knives. Achille put the wedge of dolphin that he'd saved for Helen in Hector's rusty tin. A full moon shone like a slice of raw onion. When he left the beach, the sea was still going on. Thank you. Noticias 22, Arlet Robledo. Derek Walcott se veía abrumado. El octogenario premio Nobel estaba realmente cansado. Sin embargo, conservaba cierta amabilidad arrogante que obligaba a la humildad. Y Homeros, esa soberbia épica caribeña, dirigió la conversación y entusiasmó al autor antillano. Well, I don't think that um, the leading person in the poem does all of that. Uh, in other words, it's not a martial experience, unless now for everything I say, there can be a parallel that can confirm the opposite. In other words, it is martial in the sense that yes, he fights the sea. Now, that's a big force to fight. And he fights, he doesn't fight the sea physically every day, but he contends with the sea. And that is an epic experience. In other words, any fisherman going out any day in rough weather to face, to face, um, uh, to face his life is undergoing something that has an epic quality to it because he is, he is challenging or he is encountering a force larger than he is. In that sense, yes, there's a kind of epical width. Well, the width is also a part of the epic. Su visita con motivo del décimo aniversario luctuoso de Octavio Paz remitió a Piedra de Sol, poema inscrito en la tradición de la lírica narrativa. Según Derek Walcott, Piedra de Sol es algo más. I think you have to deal with the tense of the poem. The tense, I mean, in terms of time. Uh, his tense is generally the present. It's like incantation, which is the present moment, even if it's remembered, but it is the present. It doesn't have the chronology, usually, of narrative. It's not narrative. It is uh, exaltation or condemnation or whatever, but it does not have a one, two, three, four, five, development. Um, first of all, because it is basically ex and a very expansive lyric meditation, uh, and also it is surrealist, which, in which time is, does not go in that same sequence as it does in, say, the other ordinary narrative poem. Pero el autor de Homeros no le satisface el automatismo psíquico ni el libertinaje que eso conlleva. La tradición literaria a la que pertenece así lo formó, así lo determinó. I have to say something that maybe it's not offensive, but it has to be said. I think I am not a fan of surrealism um, because I have brought up in the tradition of the language of English. Surrealism does not work in English. It works in the Spanish language because the Spanish language itself is surrealist. It's the Spanish language itself relates very closely to sound. It hears itself all the time, right? And therefore it produces a kind of poetry that can go in any direction, that is free in a sense, the way that surrealism believes is free in terms of the relationship to language. You have a very tactile, very physical relationship to your language as writers, or just as people, but as particularly as writers. Para Noticias 22, Alberto Arriaga y Guamán Rodríguez.